for this app, Inventor app, we're going to create here a quick um, time. We'll call it show time. Now, for this app, all we really need is a button. So we will drag that over. And text for button will be Now we're going to open up the, the box editor I always take the time to resize this because I don't like losing my trash can <laughs> and it's, I always want to be able to find it down there in that lower right hand corner. Also, there are tricks up here you can do to resize. You can always right click and resize your workspace. If it becomes too constrained, then um, go up here and zoom down, then re click and resize it. And it's, this is also a handy way to move around certain um, blocks once you've um, been programming. You can get, you can select them and then use this map to move them anywhere it's, um, in your in your coding. So now, what we want is an event. That happens when the button is clicked. So we will drag that over. And I also like to leave this area blank so that when I click here, I can still see my code. As a newbie, it's it bees like that sometimes. Also, you can also left click and it brings up um, the, these built in functions if you left click. See, you can, if you just need a number, hit math, one, two, three, okay, um, if you just need a quick text box, there you go, change it like that, okay, um, your true falses are under logic, your control, your loops, um, when you can get it up to multiple screens like that, colors, and list is very handy. Um, the list picker, make a list, is very good. And we'll get into CVS, uh, CSV tables and etc. later on. Okay, so there we go. We want to define a variable called time now. good programming um, and we want to define this as text button is clicked we want to set the variable time now there we go to what the uh, clock time is now just had a clock instance to be able to get a hold of the variables. So let's put that over. Let's, there we go. And it's one of our non visible components now. So if we go back over to the. There we have it. We want to know what the time is now. And we're going to call that function. At the same time, and we want a label. We're going to rename that label and we're going to call it time label. And the 
text is time. We're going to go back over to our box editor. Now that we have our time label, we are going to set the time label text to and we're going to make a list. So we're going to call make text and we're going to play around with this and see just what we can display. Yeah, well, we can display the day of month. That sounds like a good one. And to do that, um, it is going to call an instance of global time now, a variable that we just we defined. And we're going to want to separate these somehow, so we're just going to put a slash in there. Now what else can we display? We can display the month, I believe. Yes, let's call the month function and we can also do a control, select our variable here and do a control C, select somewhere else on the page and do a control V, and copy it, that instant right there. Let's do the same thing for our delimiter. And what else can we display? It seems like, um, year goes along with the day of the month in the month so let's do that oh well <laughs> little fingers for the wrong button there you go <laughs> hmm and um actually let's just make that a space there And let's display the hour. I think that's available to us. There it is. And we want another instance of our global time now variable. And typically if you're going to do a full date timestamp, you're going to want the minute. Oh, let's delimit this. Oh, well, let's keep that in there. Um, <laughs> let's see, we have another way <laughs> to choose either text or numbers there. Okay. Well, that sounds pretty good. Well, let's peruse here. And we can make an instant. Uh, we can make an instant for milliseconds. We could put in the second. We could call the system time. We could add the weekday or in the weekday name. And there's our timer events. Will you do another app to work with those? There you go. Add days, add hours if you needed to calculate a block of time. Now we also want to have a function to clear our screen. Mm -hmm. um, actually we're going to want to add a clear button to our screen. 
first. Another button. Let's rename that our clear button. And say OK. Go over here to clear. And let's go back over to our block editor and clear button. Oh, when the clear button is clicked, we want to tell the our text in the time ladle to go away so we are going to set a and set it back to plain text. Now let's save go back over to our screen editor and save the entire project. Sometimes I hit it twice just to make sure. Now we want to package for phone. Um, because I use a Nexus and I am not sure how that beta... Okay, now I'm going to show you here. I use ES File Explorer. It's a free app I downloaded to manipulate my files. Now I go in there and you see right there there is Showtime and we have to install it. First I have to go to settings and make sure that unknown sources is checked and I go back <laughs> okay there's Showtime now we can install it. It's installing very quickly and we open it. We're going to click to get the current time and it comes up just like we programmed it. And we're going to hit clear and it goes back to text.